The University of Hawaii's Undersea Research Laboratory is capable of taking scientists down to depths of over 6,000 feet, or 2,000 meters. It does this with submersibles that can be deployed from a submergible barge called the LRT. The LRT is towed out to the dive site by a tugboat, where the pilot and two observers then transfer over by small boat and enter the submersible mounted on its deck. The hatch is then shut, and the occupants will now spend the next eight hours inside a tiny seven-foot sphere. Fortunately, the pilot and each observer have their own viewport to look out of. A team of scuba divers is required in order to deploy the submersible from the LRT. Each diver has a carefully rehearsed responsibility during the launch procedure. The LRT is sunk to a depth of 60 feet by releasing air from its ballast tanks. When everything is ready, the signal is given to release the submersible from its shackles. Once released, the submersible carefully lifts off the LRT platform and the dive begins. The LRT will then be brought back to the surface to wait until the end of the dive when it will be needed again to recover the submersible and its occupants. The submersibles are capable of going to depths of over 6,000 feet. However, some projects only go to a depth of 250 feet. This project was carried out in conjunction with divers using rebreathers and other technical diving gear. This is the shallowest working depth for the submersible, but the deepest working depth for divers. The divers will only have 20 minutes of time on the bottom, and then will need to spend hours for decompression before reaching the surface. In contrast, with the command sphere kept at one atmosphere of pressure, the submersible will stay down for eight hours and the occupants simply open the hatch and exit without any decompression at all. So what do the scientists see at these depths? Most of the algae and reef corals that depend on sunlight cannot survive down here. Rocky skeletons of dead photosynthetic reefs that have slowly sunk still provide suitable habitat for a wide range of invertebrates and fishes. Around Hawaii, scientists are very interested in studying these transitional habitats between where scuba divers and submersibles typically go, since they are often neglected and are thought to contain new, as yet unseen, species. Some species of surgeon fishes, known for grazing on algae, are found this deep. But what are they eating down here where their normal food is very scarce? There are also a few species of reef corals present that have somehow evolved the ability to survive under extremely low light levels. How do they do that? These and many more questions are what scientists hope to answer during these dives. Let's go deeper, down below the depth capability of divers, where only submersibles can go. Our first stop will be at over 1,000 feet down, the depth where the world of perpetual darkness begins and where the water temperature is as cold as that off the northern coast of the mainland. Welcome to the world of cold water corals, completely different than their shallow, light-dependent relatives. Instead of forming upward-facing mounds and plates in order to maximize exposure to sunlight, many of these deeper corals form horizontal fans in an effort to maximize exposure to currents. These corals are predators, capturing their food from the water, and some places are better for doing this than others. 
One of the most fascinating deep sea corals is the gold coral, which is one of the most valuable species in the precious coral fishery here in Hawaii and elsewhere in the Pacific. Its larvae settle on other corals, not the rocky seafloor, and then grow over these host corals, killing them in the process and taking over their skeletons. It can form large golden colonies that can exist for thousands of years. The deep sea is also the realm of species that have persisted from the age of the dinosaurs. Crinoids, also known as sea lilies, are one of these living fossils, maintaining their basic structure and shape for over a hundred million years. Strange fishes also live in deeper waters, like this relative of the orange ruffy. The Indian Whitehead and the goosefish. Let's go even deeper, all the way down to 5,000 feet, where even stranger corals exist, where commensal relationships between them and other animals exist. This Venus flytrap anemone uses a bamboo coral as a perch, while brittle stars marry the corals they land on for life. What really gives the deep sea the feel of an alien planet are the bizarre sponges, often with long stalks, that have skeletons composed of silica, giving them a beautiful white crystalline appearance. At least 50 of these sponges are known to exist in Hawaiian waters that have never been described and therefore still don't even have a name. These sponges, like the corals, also serve as perches for other types of animals, such as these unstocked sea lilies and brittle stars. Our visits to this realm are all too brief, and as a result, only a fraction of the deep sea floor has ever been explored. Unfortunately, it's time to head back to the surface. The LRT is again sunk to 60 feet, and the submersible is carefully piloted to its deck. The divers shackle it back onto the deck, and air is pumped into its ballast tanks to bring it to the surface. Everything went well, and as the explorers exit the submersible, they are already looking forward to the next time they can go back into deeper waters.